Yeah, a, uh, great win. <clears throat> really good to get uh, a three-two win. Great to bounce back multiple times. Started both halves pretty poor, uh, but you know we were able to bounce back, and you know it feels pretty pretty damn good to to bring the cup home. My Pollard Burgundy Wave Cole, August last year, you were almost in tears apologizing to the fans. Robin got fired, and then you know. You know, two wins in Rocky Mountain Cup. You scored three goals in that. And I remember, I think it was 2019, you were working with Kai Kamara on penalties and you wanted it. And your first penalty and you scored to get how does it feel like everything's come full circle for you, for the Rocky Mountain Cup, you being on penalties, et cetera? Yeah, I was. I actually thought today, <clears throat> I, I read in my phone, I said, I'm going to score a hat trick today. So I didn't get the hat trick, but I did have scoring a pen in the last minute uh, for the 3 2. I kind of did envision that, um, which is kind of weird. So. You know, sometimes you just got to put stuff out into the world and, and it happens. Obviously, the hat trick didn't happen, which I would have loved. But uh, yeah, 3-2 was kind of what I was thinking the whole night in the last minute pen. And I just, you know, actually earlier in the game, I walked over and saw the goalkeeper's water bottle and he had three, I think it was Connor, me and Rafa, where we go on pens. And I was like, I'm going down the middle then because you don't think I'm going there. So <laughs> yeah, and then uh, yeah, the rest was history. Brain nurse for the Denver Post. Cole, the Olympics start this week, you know, given that situation. How much more significant significance does a goal and two assists carry for you? Yeah, it's huge. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> I think I've just tried to respond in the best way possible. Be a role model for, for people that have setbacks, stuff like that. You know, we had a, um, a good friend now, Justin. He came and spoke to us yesterday, and he was the a, a part of the SWAT team that was dealing with the Nuggets parade last year, and he lost his leg. Um, by getting run over by a fire truck. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm going to respond and, and I'm not letting the setback affect me. I'm going to come back. And now he's, you know, working back out in the field. And he, and he said just a, a month ago or a couple of weeks ago, he just had his first unit where he stormed into a house and uh, he was able to capture somebody that was um, holding a couple of people hostage. So, you know, that was a full circle moment for him. I think now for me, I'm just trying to respond as well. Um, it was a setback for sure. I definitely wanted to be there. I want to be there with Georgie, be there with a lot of my friends and, and represent this country, but you know, I can't be, so you got to make the most of, of what you've got here. And, and that's games here to, to prove yourself and show your quality. And, you know, I, especially with Georgie gone, somebody has got to step up with, with goals and assists and I'm just trying to do my best at that. So, um, yeah, it feels pretty special to get one. And if they're counting that other one as a, another assist, then I'll, I'll be happy. That's good for me and Porg to add another one to the stat sheet. Hey, Cole Keith, Richards team, MBS Media. Um, there's still a pretty significant amount of the season left to play, but up to this point, uh, the team is on track to double the goals amount scored from last year, get more goals than they had in 2021. <laughs> what is it about Chris Armis that makes this team go, and how has he been able to get this team to be so successful? Yeah, it's, I mean, a lot of it's just the way he, he thinks. You know, he tells us all the time put the ball back in the net, play forward. You know, the best part of the game is scoring goals. And even though we didn't play at our best tonight, you see there's a couple chances there where if we actually execute a couple of passes there, we have, you know, maybe a 3v2 in on goal or something like that where, where it's a good chance. Um, and we know that we can create those in this league, especially with the pressure that we put on other teams. But our first two goals come off of that stuff. We put pressure on them, we win the ball back, and then we go quickly to goal. Um, and I think that's a huge, you know, advantage for us that I don't think most teams train a lot you know every single week we're working on this stuff and he's showing us video and showing us the best teams in the world how they play forward quickly and and the defense isn't set yet when they lose the ball so I think that's why we're scoring so many goals and you know a lot of us have confidence that we're going to get chances in a game so you don't have to think oh I'm going to get one chance I have to put it away you know you're going to get many and then you just feel a bit better in front of that Ian McClintock sports form clearly an hour 46 minute wait in between the first half and the second half not usually an ideal situation for you and the guys what are you and the guys usually doing or talking about there in the locker room and what does that kind of affect with you especially here in a rivalry game like this yeah it was tough um you know the first we heard that it was going to be a 30 minute wait so obviously then you're kind of thinking oh we don't it's just a little bit of a break um stay mentally focused but then we heard that it was going to be around an hour, hour and a half. Um, so then we all kind of just put our legs up, took all of our gear off and started watching games uh, from around the league. And and then they brought some good food for us. I think uh, I had an Uncrustable. Maybe that was the key to, to victory tonight. Um, there was also some some spicy marinara that the boys were, you know, thought was giving them a little kick as well. Um, so, yeah, we just chill, eat, and then talk. And then as it gets closer to game time, then the coaches come back in and we start getting our game plan. Um, but it did affect us a bit. You saw we didn't start that second half very well. Um, and they did, so credit to them. But I think we got to be ready for that because that happens quite often here in Colorado that we have delays. Cold. 
sorry. <laughs> uh, Cole, um, Johnny got an assist and a goal. Uh, Sam opened his account. Just how much more meaningful is that to you to see them contribute in that way in this game? Yeah. Johnny's goal kickstarted everything for us. We really didn't have much going before that. And to be honest, even my pass, I was pretty pissed at myself because it, it kicked up on me right as I went to try to caress it into him. And it was not a good pass at all, to be honest. But he finished uh, that ball really well. I mean, he timed it perfectly. And, and that gave us a bit more momentum uh, towards the end of the second half. So he was really key for that. Uh, and then Vinesy, he starts that play as well. He wins the ball, you know, play Johnny, and then he gives it back to Vinesy. And, and I said to him before the before the game if there's any game you're going to score in this year please score in this one because he's been waiting he had a chance for his galaxy uh in like the 87th minute the other day that you know he came in the locker room and he was pretty pissed and i went over to him and i said look we all miss chances you know bounce back and and he did it tonight he had a really good game and gomez is, is a tough one to deal with so to be able to to score a goal and then you know do pretty well with him defensively i, th I think it's really big for his confidence Hey, Cole, going back to uh, Sam Vines, like you said, he opened his account this year. Um, he had a tough incitement in Gomez. Uh, how do you feel about his performance up to this point this season so far? Yeah, he's – I think he's grown as the season's gone on. Um, I think when he first came back, it, it's a different style than what he was used to. At Antwerp, they played with the ball a lot, um, and we're a little bit more vertical, and, and we like to play quicker combinations and, and get forward fast, and sometimes that – doesn't suit him as much because he doesn't have as much time to get into the attack as a as a left back. Um, he likes patient build up and then it allows him to slowly get into the attack and he can make those runs from outside back. So I think he's had to adapt to it a bit. Um, but I think every single game you can see he gets more confidence. Even both of Gomez's goals are from outside the box. Like it's not like he's getting beat one v one. It's it's unlucky. Um, you know, and and maybe we can do a bit better to close him down there as as other guys when he cuts inside. So. Yeah, I think he's. It, it's big for him tonight. It's a big confidence boost, and we're going to need him going forward because our outside backs are really key, and, and when Keegan and Sammy play well, I think the rest of the team plays well. Um, Cole, not only have you guys had a lot of experience from last year with rain delays, but also with soggy pitches as a result of that. How were those situations for you, and did you guys try to adjust to that just given the way the first half started? Second half, excuse me. Yeah, it, it was a bit different uh, when you came out. There was a couple puddles in there, but it wasn't too bad as the game went on. Uh, we tried to be a little bit less risk averse uh, than we were uh, before that, but you know it didn't play too big a role. We like a fast, wet pitch, so I think it, it benefited us. But you know they're, they're a good team. Um, they've definitely grown a lot in terms of possession, so it was quite hard to stop, and they had the ball a lot. And you know that doesn't suit us as much, but we tried to deal with it, and we responded every single time that that they kind of punched us down. We we stood right back up. Now looking ahead with the Portland Timbers coming up to you guys on August 1st, what do you feel that you can transition from this game, carry into that next game with group stage coming up in August? It's a, uh, a big tournament. We, we definitely feel um, like we got something to prove this year. It wasn't fun for us last year going out in two games. You, you want to make a run in this tournament. We know that they've been on, in a good run of form recently, and uh, especially losing to them 4-1 in the first game of the season. I think a lot of the boys, after we get a little break, will be – Raring to go. I think that's one that we kind of want back uh, a little bit of revenge in a sense because we really feel like we didn't um, play against them how we wanted to play. Um, so we'll be looking forward to going back up there again. And hopefully if you get a result in the first game, I think that boasts well for your, your hopes of getting out of the group stage. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll be ready to go. I think we need to take a quick break here and kind of get the group back together so that we're all healthy going into the final stretch of the season. Um, but after that, I think it's we want to make a, a deep run in this tournament. We don't want you know, three weeks off where we're just sitting here training. So, yeah, it's going to be a big one. Yeah. Um, Cole, we've seen in the context of other MLS rivalries, normally the Rocky Mountain Cup isn't as relevant because of where the teams are and then also how non-competitive it's been. Does it feel like, you know, now this trophy, this competition finally has juice? And do you care about the national media, whether or not they, you know, talk about the Rocky Mountain Cup as if it's relevant? Uh, I, th I think it does have juice now, for sure. I think... And that's down to Chris Armas and even Pablo on the other side. I, I think the coaches are the ones that put out teams that um, play a certain style that I think is fun for the fans to watch. I mean, all three games had a lot of goals. All three games were fiery. There was always stuff going on in them. Um, and I think this rivalry, more so than other ones, uh, you can just see what it means to the players and the fans. And uh, that was probably the loudest I've heard our stadium in a while. Uh, in that first half after we scored the second one, I, I really think it was bouncing. And 
Um, it kind of felt, I said to some of the guys, it kind of felt a little bit like a European atmosphere. Um, and, and that hasn't happened as much here, just in America in general. So um, I think it was huge for us to, to have a lot of fans here. And I wish the weather delay didn't happen so that, you know, it could have continued in the second half. But yeah, you can feel there's some spice to it. And I'm sure if, if we play against e each other later in the year, maybe in playoffs, I think it'll be a little extra spice, even more so than there was in, in the regular season games.